All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to replace um, when I do one side, when I'm going to do both sides, driver, passenger side, uh, suspension replacement, which consists in um, replacing the uh, shocks, the, uh, the tie rod ends, the outer and the inside, and then um, you want to replace basically uh, that's pretty much it you know uh, we're gonna secure the car this is a 2002 Volkswagen Beetle okay we'll make sure to uh, secure uh, the back the rear wheels okay and then uh, we're gonna remove one of the wheels so I'm gonna start with the driver's side first to do that, we're gonna replace, uh, we're gonna remove the top wipers, both of them. It has a 13, I think, I believe 13 millimeters nut. If you can uh, pull it out with it by hand, just use a kind of something, uh, a pray bar to just get it out, okay? Easy like that. Then we're gonna see the nut for the uh, uh, shocks when I had to use an allen tool because if you just try to remove it like that it will move the whole thing okay so you won't lose the nut at all so when I use uh, a spark plug socket and a uh, the um, the uh, allen tool key okay this is it right here 1316 okay once you get this because uh, you're gonna have to use a wrench to loose it up okay this is what we're gonna do when i use 1516 all right and the 1316 socket and the seven millimeters uh allen key there you go this is what we're gonna use okay just place just hold the allen key with something uh, bigger than that because uh, when I use a uh, like a little two large two so we can hold the key once we lose the the, uh, the nut on the bottom okay let me go grab something or find something that I can there you go see this is a piece of uh, pop tube so I'm gonna just hold it like that and then loose it up there you go see easy peasy okay it's gonna take a little while but you know you will get it you get it you can also use a uh, well, if you have a better idea than me, well, that's that's cool, you know. But this, this is the way it's supposed to be. Remove the shock, the absorber shock, okay? The, for 2002 uh, Volkswagen Beetle. All right, keep going. Same ways for on the other side, okay? But today I'm gonna show you just do one side because it's a long video, so I don't have to make two videos doing the same thing, okay? Okay. All right. The nut is just got stuck in my socket. Let me pull it out, just like this. Okay. That's it. After that, we're gonna go ahead and do the, okay. the bottom part now. Ahí está. Okay. We're gonna do the uh, after this. Oh, take this one out. You can use a flathead screwdriver or or pliers like the one I'm using it. Okay. And that's it, guys. Don't remove. Do not remove this nut because that's the one makes. The, uh, the uh, uh, shock 
spring out. Right. We're gonna replace the uh, arm control, control arm. It's only one. Well, instead of buying the whole control arm, we're gonna just replace the bushings, okay? Today I'm gonna show you how. Because if you buy the whole control arm, it's a hundred dollars. If you just buy the bushings, it's only like twenty bucks, okay? Maybe less than that. I can remember. Let's remove the ABS line as well. Okay, we're gonna remove just the, uh, with the Allen key. On this type of parts, it's just Allen keys that you basically use to remove sc small screws. Ahí está. No, le está muy apretado. It should be Guárdale, freely free to take it out. Ese es nomás un tal empaque del amortiguador. Okay, and then uh, you just remember if you use, if it's Tenga. the first time you use, uh, you Allá wanna na. do this, just take pictures, all right? There you go. You Esto ya más lo limpiamos. Muy atento, y trae fierro y trae todo eso, el magnético, lo vamos a limpiar uh, antes de ponerlo. Ok, ahí está. Get ready. Now we're gonna remove the uh, caliper. Ahí está. Sí. I'm gonna have to use a, uh, another, uh, no something to spread it out. Ok. <coughs> Let me find like a, a wrench. So I can just have a little more force help here. There you go, let's do this now. Now we have to use uh, like this. Alright, uh, now the same thing, the one for the bottom. There you go. So you want to keep, uh, remove the whole assembly, uh, brake assembly, okay? As you can see, we got good brake pads and everything for so far right now. Make sure uh, remove completely the screws right here because sometimes they got stuck so that way it won't let you remove the caliper freely okay next we're gonna unscrew this uh, Phillips screw attached to the uh, rotor <coughs> and then just just pull it out as you can see it's very easy then after that we're gonna remove the big uh, we're gonna lose the nut from the sh uh, absorber shock okay when I use the nut on the front and the wrench in the back, so I won't move once you loosen it. There you go. Yeah, because once you start loosening it, the other the other side is, is moving it at the same time. So let me use kind of a wrench to hold it. There you go. Now I'm gonna. I don't wanna be lazy, but I wanna, I wanna be smart, so I'm gonna use my electric impact wrench. Okay. You know, we in the United States, so we have pretty much everything here, so you can have. There you go. See, much easier. Work smart, not hard, guys. Then we're gonna remove the uh, outer tie rod end. What you gotta do is place your Allen key in the bolt and place your uh, three quarters uh, wrench and start losing it, okay. Simple like that, look. Yeah. Very simple, guys.
ACPC. It's gonna take you know it's a little while just to get in and out. Of course, they should be have the Allen key on top, not on the bottom. There you go. Now we just gonna do now the uh, big knot here. It's not working. If it doesn't work with your impact drill, so now you have to use a breaker bar, okay? Now we're gonna use a breaker bar, but I'm gonna put my half inch uh, ratchet first, like that, okay? There you go, simple like that. You can support it with something on the bottom, which I didn't do it. There you go. I should be lose this one first at the beginning, but now you know, guys. You should be just lose that one at the beginning. I didn't lose it at the beginning because I didn't know what it's gonna take to take all this out. So I had to take the remove the axle as well, the driver axle. There you go. And remember to remove the. Uh, okay. You just pull it up, but remember to remove the. Uh, the uh, how's it called? The little part for the suspension as well. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah, that one's still good, so we're not still using it, so there's no there's no toss, you know, to, to remove this part because it's still in very good condition. So we're just gonna lose it and leave it there. Let me use my electric. There you go. Okay. Perfecto. Now, next, I'm going to remove or lose or take it out this part see you hit two there you go simple as that guys this is your absorber shock for the, your suspension it's just go in there like that it has a guide right here and that's it if you wanna just replace the the shock itself without the spring you know you need a press so you can pull it out and put it in but I'm what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna replace the whole thing okay that's it right now now it's time if you want to replace the TV axle as well or the wheel bearing in this case we're not gonna do it because they're still good now we're like, what we're gonna do we're gonna replace or remove the uh, the uh, what's it called the um, bottom uh, the bottom ball join you can just remove the three bolts on the bottom but I should I should be done that before remove the big knot you know but, uh, this is the way you do it this the other way you, you can do it either way okay there you go Yeah, finito, finito, signori. Finito, signori. Okay, because it has three bolts uh, on the bottom, so you can do either either way, okay? So now, next is gonna be the tie rod end. This bolt is still good. And then, uh, 
Okay, now we're gonna do the, the control R. Uh, it was a little bit tricky to get it out. I think I should be okay. Ahora, the engine a little bit so I can have access to the left or the front bolt. Tres cuartos. Because that's the one make me. Yeah, this one right here, the one I'm working right now. This one on the front of the engine. That's the one gave me. Well, I'm gonna lose the other one. The one in the back is the easy one. Okay, or you gotta do it losing it and hold it the one on top with a wrench. <coughs> okay, but the one on the bottom and the front of the engine, that one was the pain. Why? Because it didn't have any room to. I mean, you can lose it and it's loose. But how are you gonna take take it out, pull it out? That was the uh, the tricky part, the pain. Okay, so you have to work it out something here, or you are gonna figure it out. I think I just did it like really lucky. I think you had to lift the engine out up a little bit so you can get it out freely, which I didn't do. It. I was just working. <clears throat> different ways, you know, took me like 30 minutes to get it out, maybe more than 30 minutes, see this is the uh, the bushing that is bad, I'm gonna show you in a minute, let me take it out the whole thing, okay, look, you can buy the whole control arm, for a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. or you can just buy the bushing for twenty bucks. Let me show you how it looks a bad bushing. How it does look a bad bushing. Okay. Yeah, like that. It's a bad bushing. And it's broken actually. It's completely broken. Let me focus the camera so you can see. It has cracks already. Let me turn it around so you can see. Uh -huh. No, pero póngalo acá en el piso como estaba. Yeah, see? That's broken. Yeah, so we're gonna replace it as well. That's okay. the that's the control arm guys. It's not the lower or the upper, that's the only one it has. So it's just called the control arm. For the driver's side. And the other one here, the other one looks good. So there's no. It's only the one on this side, this pushing right here. The other one is still good. Okay. Now, the next. Now, next, we're gonna remove the uh, outer and inner tie rod end. As you can see, normal, most of the time I see mechanics. Replacing only only the outer tie rod end. I think, in my opinion, you should be replaced both of them at the same time because you just replace just one little arm, but not the other one. Come on, guys. You should be replaced both at the same time, every time. Okay, so what when I use. We're gonna remove the boot first. It has a clamp in the in the at the end in the back. One big one and then the little one on the front. You just use a flat head screwdriver to pry it out. And you're not gonna use the same one because it won't it won't work again. So you have to replace it and get a new clamp for the boot 
If the boot is still in good conditions, reuse the boot. If not, replace as well. In this case, we're gonna reuse the boot because it's still good conditions. The only thing we're gonna replace is the clamps. Okay? To secure it. Alright, once you get it out, you just pull it out this way. There you go. So you can have access of the big knot for the uh, for the uh, inner uh, tie rod end right there now you use just a wrench I mean yeah whatever it fits here to loosen it up it's, it's hard a little bit but <clears throat> what you gotta do have a patient okay just make sure you get it you grab it good I'm a W40 so otherwise it will mess up the knot. Let me just add a little bit of... Well, I didn't put a lot WD-40, but... Uh, uh, there you go. Finito, finito, bichori. Finito, bichori. Alright. So now loose loose it up by hand or just turn it and then uh, after that we're good to go okay there you go simple as that guys make sure it's clean keep it clean here inside the tube Protect it with something so it won't get any debris inside. Once we're replacing the other parts. Okay. There you go. Make sure you you have our team. Okay. We're gonna start with the bushing. This is a setup with a press ball joint that we're gonna use to remove the bushings. Okay, you need you definitely need help here second hand and then what you gotta do is press it down see from the flat surface to the bottom okay just like that oops oops the one is broken. So you want to put a new one. Maybe pray. I'm gonna just add a little bit of the I mean WD-40 to the surface. Make sure to take a picture of how to, how to it was before, so it goes to the same direction. Okay. So don't put it wrong. This one side is bigger than the other one. But it looks the same to me. Alrighty. This is the setup that I'm gonna use. There you go. Then the little one. You have to use a uh, a professional uh, press ball joint to do this, okay? Or you can just use a regular uh, uh, press and find the, the same exact fit to do this, okay? Yeah, see? Okay. Alrighty. Let's see how beautiful it is. So you don't have to buy. Well, if you don't have the press ball joint, yeah, you, you have to do it. <laughs> you have to just replace the whole control arm, guys. But if you have a press ball joint like mine, you know, you can do it. You use that one. Now we're going to remove the ball joint, the lower ball joint. But that's the only ball joint that goes on this, uh, on this car, on the control arm.
Alrighty. Alrighty. Oh, 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 alrighty. Alrighty. Nice. Now I'm gonna use my electric impact. My electric ratchet. There you go. Work smart, not hard, guys, like I said before. That's the ball joint. Now we're gonna replace a new one. Let me move all this trash out of the way. All this stuff. And then there you go, the new ball joint. Easy peasy. Okay. Now place it. I like minute and you're good to go. I'm gonna use a, a tread locker for the bolts that keeps to the bolts to get in loose with the time with the vibrations but do the vibrations of the car so just play a little bit a tra tra uh, blue tread locker okay just to keep the screw in there and it won't lose it won't get it loose, okay? There you go. Uh, you had to torque it at uh, your uh, manual specifications. I don't know that. Then I know I got good hands, so I know how much force to put in on these bolts, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna use my ratchet to finalize the, the torque. I think that it's like 20, uh, 35 pounds, full pounds. I don't can remember. There we go. Just double check. There we go. Let's rock on. Okay. On the uh, tie rod ends, guys, what you gotta do is measure the length of the whole thing because you're replacing both. If you're replacing one, you know you can do on the only on the first on the at the outer. But since I'm gonna replace both, just remember take uh, measure the length of the whole tie rod end. Okay. Now from here. The whole thing, okay. But I'm just taking my uh, own specifications. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of get it closer to the same to the new one, okay. It comes in two different pieces: the inner and the outer. This is the inner right here, guys. Okay. I'm gonna remove the nut completely because I need to. To uh, put the uh, install the boot and the from the old one to the new one. Okay, I'm just gonna check here if it's the same length of the threads than the other one. But uh, I believe it has a little more extra threads. So just measure the whole complete thing from bottom to end, from the outer to the inner, and see how was the size was it how big it is okay and you go by that this is a piece right here i remember we had to use uh remove the that's a part number tie right in and you're supposed to and you just screw in like this but remember we had to use the uh the boots okay let me remove this whole nut out and then uh, 
I'm gonna show you how to remove the outer tie rod in. It comes uh, with all the little uh, parts here with a washer like that, okay? There you go. Then uh, I'm gonna use the uh, a wrench, two wrench, one two to hold the knot and the other one to loose the outer tie rod right in. Okay, like that. And all you gotta do is the there you go. I'm gonna count the, the uh, turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty, twenty-one turns. Okay, so when you install the new one or the other one, you do the same thing, okay? Okay, remove the nut so you can have access to remove, take out the, the boot. Okay, so that's it. Now install the, see, see how bad it was this one? Now get the new one. There we go. Now I'm gonna pull the nut first. Okay. There we go. Hurry up, hurry up. You always use a WD-40 for the threads. Simple like, like that. Alrighty. Okay. So about about the same some like that guys but every time you replace these uh, tie rod ends you have to take your car to alignment shop okay so they take care of the alignment for you don't just replace it unless you have very good eye this to leave it the way it was but I don't think so it moves a lot so once you replace it, take it to the shop for alignment, okay? Now when you install the outer tie run in, just count the turns, just like you did at the other one. It was 19, 21, I think. Just get it close, you know, not perfect, but just get it closer. And then after this, we're good to go to install all the parts back on okay the only one is gonna be pain is the control arm because of that bolt okay well here i'm just checking again the bolts because i think I'll, I'll lose the count so i'm gonna start over again sorry guys just make sure they're good the same okay yeah it looks good to me One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one. There you go. I think that's it, guys. Now just adjust the nut and you're good to go
Yo sé. Remember to install the greasy feeding here, the grease feeding. Remember the old one doesn't have one, but this one has one. So you can add more uh, grease to it. Let me use little little ones like five millimeters. Okay. This is the pro, uh, press ball joint part number that I use. All right, that's the super set. As you can see, this is the best one. It has all the parts to you, your ball joints, bushings, anything you need to press. See, perfect or nice. I paid like 200 bucks for it online, I believe. This is the one I used to uh, press, this is the part number that I use to press the bushings out. This is the one I use on the bar, remember? So it has different sizes, you can do your setup, this, your own. See, it works, but it works better for you. Alrighty. Alright, now the fun part. Use thread locker as well for the uh, inner tie rod and nut. Remember everything is clean. I'm gonna just a little bit more grease here. And then I just make a mess, but I just try to put more grease in you know, inner. So it keeps. Alright. Turn it and turn it until you get in by hand first and then use your wrench to uh, tie it in tie it in let me go let's see there's a little bit of room here you know this is my dad's car so well, not my dad's, my sister's car. But I'm helping her doing this so they can take the uh, the car to a alignment shop. Okay, but they want to replace the shocks and the uh, and the uh, control arm bushings, and then uh, see how steady is now the the. Uh, the uh, the uh, inner and outer tie rod ends they don't move nothing like all they're not like falling like the like the other one they're pretty steady oh remember the boot using your uh, new clamps okay you wash your clamps so you can tie it in all right that's good I'm gonna just lubricate the new uh, bushings from the control arm and we're good to go. Just lubricate with a WD-40. WD this is the part I'm telling you guys, it's, it's tricky. Uh, I'm gonna try next time, I think you can just uh, leave the engine okay. up so you can get it have more room I didn't do this time but you now I'm watching the video I think that was one option okay well uh, I just got it in like tricky moving it up and down pull it out put it in it took me an hour to get this control arm back in here just for the part of the front of the engine, that's a, that was a pain. The other one, the bad was not. A, it was a pro. <sighs> oh my god, I'm sleepy.
just by, by watching this video. Hopefully you're not sleeping like me, guys. Well, I wasn't sleeping, but now I was doing it. Okay. Now just put all the bolts and nuts in their uh, torque specifications, which I will remember. So you do search yourself online. What's the torque? Not responsible if you get hurt. If you get hurt, if you get an uh, injury, because of this video, this video is just for entertainment purposes only. That's uh, I always say on all my videos, I'm not a professional mechanic. Well, I'm not doing this for living. This is my, my hobby, but I always follow the uh, factory recommendations. To, do, to get the job done well, you know? But like I said, I don't do this for a living, I don't charge for this type of job. So, just watch the video for entertainment purposes only. Don't do what I do or don't say what I, don't do what I say, so, okay? Okay, now when I do, when I install the rubber, like this, this is a, Shock Observer. Alright. Just go in. Easy peasy. That's it. What I'm waiting for is that long out oh, for the bolt. Let me install the ball so it won't come out, okay? There you go. Don't tie it in yet. Just put it in. I'm just checking how it's gonna go back in there. Alright. There you go. Now up there, we need to hold it. the uh, shock observer with the bolts okay don't don't screw it in yet all the way just a little bit so it holds the whole part up uh, for the ball joint uh, as well and then uh, up there for the uh, for the uh, shock observer okay just like that Let me borrow that, that. Let me do it. There we go. See? Just leave it like that for now. Then add a little bit of grease here to put the um, CV, ax CV axle back in there. There we go. Easy peasy. Just put everything back on, guys. Everything else is the easy part. The, I think it took me like, as I would say, like a couple hours to do this. Maybe more than that because I had to run to the store, get the parts. Maybe about four hours. Two hours for each on each side. Okay. Of course, if I do this every day, you know. Took me probably take me hour to do that to disassemble another hour to assemble. But I think it took me more than that because I had to wait for the orders and all that. All right, we're good to go. Remember to. Pour all the screws back in. Okay. And we're good to go. Okay, now make sure to tie it up, tie it in all the way now, okay? I 
that's that's good. That's good, guys. And pretty much that's now the nut. I don't know the torque, guys. So you just better find out online what's the uh, torque specification for this. I just go by the impact, you know. Whatever the impact goes all the way, that's what I use. And that, that, that I did it last. Uh, was back in May, uh, 2009. I mean, 19, okay. 2019 May, something like that. So now it's November, December, and it's still good. So that means I did a good job, you know. My dad haven't tell me any complaints about it. So I've been run so smooth and nice all these months. Okay, to we may just put it back in there, and that's it. See how how hard is this tie rod end now? So it's good. Remember to put uh, to put this Daldia, the secure pin, and turn it so it won't come out. To secure the nut. That's it, guys. I'm gonna do the final tied here but for the uh, for the bottom of the absorber shock there we go and that's it well that rotor looks looks bad but I'll probably replace it next time because we don't have that much money now anymore we already spent too much but there you go my dad, he, he he doesn't have any problem with the brake, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Remember to uh, grease, add grease to the uh, to caliper paints always, okay, guys, always. Because if you don't grease them, they your brakes not gonna work well, okay? They're gonna get stuck. So remember to grease the bolts. All right. Make sure it's lined up, okay? If it's not lined up, it's not gonna work at all. And remember to clean the rotor with a uh, brake cleaner, okay? And that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the video. If not, well, I'm sorry. I I did it, okay? Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Happy holidays.